I'm Jeff Zarnett, and this is Software Career Growth. Today we're going to talk about some general advice for junior software developers. Alright, in today's topic we are talking about some just general advice for what you should do if you're new as a, a software developer, whether that's um, you're an intern, a co-op student, uh, or just a new hire. A few things that will be hopefully helpful in terms of making sure that you find your feet and understanding what to expect. So the first thing that I want to talk about is it's okay not to know things. If you've been hired as a junior software engineer, people understand that you are in fact a junior software engineer and they're not expecting that you will be able to do exactly the same thing as a senior one uh, or a staff engineer or a distinguished you know, engineering fellow uh, whose name was on an award, right? Expectations are more reasonable than that or at least they should be. If the place that you work at is hiring you as a junior but expecting you to do the work of a senior, I have questions and you know, first among them is, is that a place you should be working? But have some realistic um, expectations of yourself as well, right? Um, it's okay not to know things. What you should be able to do is have a way to find them out. And Google and Stack Overflow and all these tools exist and, and they are quite helpful. Uh, I myself sometimes look at, say, the actual like library specification or the language specification, if it's a new programming language that I'm learning, to have it tell me something about how to use the thing that I want to use. Um, and that's fine. It's okay not to know the answer as long as you have a way to find out. And in a way, that's kind of weird, right? You know, as a professor, you, know, you were expecting me to say, well, you know, it's important that you know things. Um, but actually, realistically, I know the answer is it's more important to be able to find it than to have memorized anything. Uh, and at least um, you know, in academic life, I try to write exams that are not based around the idea of memorization of trivia. Students may disagree as to whether I'm successful, uh, but that is itself a different story. But knowing how to find out is important because ultimately you will be more successful with a procedure for finding things out. And I think there's a lot of misconception about what you should know, right? Being a senior person does not mean you never have to look anything up. I mean, it might, you know, if you remember it, if you are good at memorization, then yeah, you don't need to look things up very often, in which case, sure, <laughs> that, that's great. Uh, but realistically, like even you know, senior and staff engineers, they still Google things, they still use Stack Overflow. So have reasonable expectations of yourself. Uh, and hopefully the employer has reasonable expectations of you as well. Related to that, point two is around the idea of knowing when to ask for help. There's a spectrum, right? At, at the one end, it's you know, as soon as you encounter something you don't know how to do, you immediately go ask somebody, uh, and that's very frustrating because it's depriving yourself of an opportunity to learn, but it's also frustrating for the person that you're asking to help because they have their own work to do and they can't spend all their time helping you. On the other hand, there's the other extreme where you spend a huge amount of time stuck on this tiny thing where somebody could have given you a little hint and you would have solved it in you know, one quarter or one tenth of the time. And knowing when to ask for help is kind of just a matter of um, experience. There's no magic formula where I can say, all right, if you have been stuck on a problem of size A for a period of time, you know, not less than B, then at that point it is appropriate to ask for help C. But this is something where you should have a conversation with other team members, uh, or you should have a goal setting or an uh, expectation setting session with manager, uh, or perhaps your onboarding partner or onboarding buddy, if your company assigns you one, to talk to them about, okay, when is a good time to ask for help? Right? Everybody needs to ask for help sometimes, and there's really nothing wrong with it. You know, even senior engineers will post and say, hey, I'm having this problem. Has anybody encountered this before? Does anybody have a suggestion or just view the problem differently than I would? And that sort of thing is perfectly fine. The hard part is knowing when and where to ask for help and setting expectations with your manager or with a more senior team member will really help you to nail down what makes sense. And over time, you will, of course, figure out what is normal in your organization. Third thing, listen and learn. This one obviously doesn't apply to everybody, um, but certainly I've, I've met some people who you know, finished their you know, undergraduate engineering degree and they think that they are 
super knowledgeable about everything and you know, everyone else knows nothing, Jon Snow. Not great as an attitude. Um, the expectation as a junior is that you are going to listen and learn things from people who are more senior. With that said, it is entirely possible that you know things that they don't, or that you have certain expertise that they do not, uh, or just you know, they're wrong and you're right. And that's okay. Um, there's a polite way to, to do that, and code realistically is nice um, in the sense that you, know, you can do an experiment. So if I think this will work and somebody else disagrees with me, it's okay, let's write a little test program and let's see what happens, and one of us will be vindicated by the result. Political situations are not as nice. Uh, it's much harder to actually like do an experiment and, and test it out to actually see who is correct and who is incorrect. Uh, but code is nice like that. So listen and learn first. Um, respect the fact that you know, other people have lots of experience and lots of knowledge. Just recognize also that um, you may have a contribution to make, uh, and it's not just they're correct, you're incorrect, and um, that's the way that things are. Fourth thing that I'd like to say is that some people um, have told me that when they hire a junior person, they're hiring for that person's energy, for their excitement, and for their potential. Uh, and I'll talk about sort of each of those um, on their own. Um, so juniors are sort of expected in a way to have lots of energy, lots of willingness to try different things, do new stuff, um, go outside of their comfort zone. Uh, and to be really excited about learning and willing to put in some extra efforts and you know, do some do some stuff that they might not otherwise want to do or might not otherwise be expected to do. And that's okay. Uh, but I think realistically, you know, when you're hiring somebody for a junior engineer, I think the last part is the potential is important. Um, I believe, as you will imagine from the name of the YouTube series, quite strongly in the idea of career growth. And somebody who works their way up through the company, you know, starting as a junior and becoming you know, gradually intermediate and senior in terms of their responsibilities, is someone who has you know, come with lots of energy, maybe, lots of excitement, maybe, but they've gained lots of knowledge and experience. And in the end, when you get somebody who is a senior engineer, who started out in the company as a junior, they know a lot about the company. They have an you know, understanding of the history. Um, they have understanding of why the decisions are made. They, you know, the company culture and the engineering culture are ingrained in this person. And that's really good. That's hard to replicate. You can hire somebody who is you know, a senior engineer and you can ask them, you know, could you please you know, come on board and, and help us with this? But it inevitably takes time. And junior people who have become senior in this regard um, are a huge advantage because they have all kinds of knowledge and all kinds of experience that's really hard to replicate and really hard to transmit to a new person when a new person joins. So uh, I definitely think potential uh, is a part of it, but of course you have responsibility also to you know, work on reaching that potential. Right? Um, if you want to be a senior software engineer, you have to start doing senior software engineering things. You can't just stay as a junior. That you are watching this suggests that you actually want to go somewhere with this. You want to get better, you want to improve. So that's a good start. Um, but also you know, take charge and take action. Just watching the video isn't necessarily enough. The fifth point that I want to make is around volunteering. So inevitably, in any engineering organization, there are things that need doing where volunteers are sought. And this could be, we want to try out a new thing. Does anybody want to be on the team that evaluates it? This could be, we are going to roll out a new way of integration tests and we need certain services to volunteer to be the first ones to do it. Um, it could be anywhere in between. Um, it could be just somebody says, hey, I have this interesting idea. Will somebody help me test it out? Volunteering is, in my opinion, really good. It is a way for you to get exposure to different ideas, different problems, different people uh, that you might otherwise not get if you were just to stay in your corner and work on whatever you have been you know, assigned to do. And so volunteering is a great way to learn stuff and to improve. 
And in the end, right, it is a big contribution. If you are a pilot uh, internal customer for the new testing framework and it turns out to be a great success, like, all right, you have a lot of knowledge about this. Now people will ask you questions about it. You will be able to help others to roll it out in their services. In all of these cases, you know, it's to your benefit you know, in terms of your learning, but also in terms of your career growth and in terms of even your standing in the company that you have had this opportunity and taken advantage of it. But it's important not to lose focus. You still have responsibilities. You know, your team has goals that you want to meet and you know, your manager is expecting you to accomplish certain things this year. So you can't chase every single project you have to be kind of judicious about which are the ones that are interesting to you, which are the ones you realistically have time for, and also which are the ones where you can make a contribution. If the project is around a subject where you have no expertise, you know, should we adopt Rust as a programming language and you don't know anything about Rust and you don't have that much experience with different programming languages at all, maybe there isn't so much that you could contribute there. On the other hand, maybe that's just like, negative of me. Maybe actually you say, I want to participate because I am somebody who has no experience with Rust and I want to model what it would be like for you know, other people who have no experience with Rust to give it a try and find out. So there's an argument probably for participating in just about any project uh, where they're looking for volunteers, but choose carefully which are the ones that you're interested in, which are the ones that you realistically have time for uh, amongst your other responsibilities, and which are the ones that you can make a contribution so you don't get too distracted because at the end of the day, you're gonna be in big trouble if your team is not delivering on its objectives because, oh, well, we spent too much time you know, implementing the new testing framework. That's probably not gonna be well received by management. In any case, um, I hope that you can take these tips and use them as you work your way through being a junior engineer. Uh, and as an intermediate engineer, uh, your challenges are a little bit different. And as you get to senior, it's sort of even more different than that. Uh, and I expect that in time I'll have some videos uh, that will address those particular challenges, referencing this one, um, but because you know, some things will be the same, but other things will be different. But if you're a junior, getting yourself off to a good start is very important. So that's all. Don't forget to like and subscribe.